What's up YouTube? This is NCT Fishing here. As promised, this is my video of how to tie river flies or how I like to tie my river flies. But first thing first, big shout out to my dad, my OG, my father. He's the one who taught me and showed me how to tie these river flies. And this is going to be a voiceover video. So as you can see, I'm holding uh, a fly that he gave to me four years ago. Um, I keep it as, I guess, as a template to copy it uh, the way how he ties it. And um, yeah, I'm just going to be showcasing it, just trying to get the camera to focus. And um, pretty much showcase it the way how we like to tie it. So what I'm doing is trying to show you guys the head of the river fly. So what that long strip is, I believe it's called a Merla tensile. I I looked it up and um that's what it's called and um everything will be listed in the description below. And I'm just going to be turning around 360 so you guys get a full look on the way how my pops like to tie it. The only big difference of the way how I tie my flies is the head is a little bit bigger. Other than that, everything, I try to keep it the same because it works. And yeah. But as you can see, those little long, little skinny strips, those are just called flash. Um, I don't know. It's just called flash something. I forgot the name of it. But the hook is off, so I don't have to worry about me hooking myself or anything because... Uh, the rivers that we like to fish, it has, a lot, it has a lot of snags, it has a lot of rocks, and obviously the hooks, they break after pulling on them. Um, yeah, just pulling on the fly and stuff like that. I know it's going to be a long video, it's 24 minutes, you guys probably don't want to hear it, so I'm going to break the video into sections so that way you guys could skip it. To when I'll start tying and stuff like that. Um, yeah. The hooks we like using is the size 6 Herberdine hooks. Uh, we like to use the red color. But you can use any color. It's fine. Uh, we just like the red color because it's, I don't know, mimics like blood, I guess. Um, like a dying shad or something or a dying minnow. But this is some of the stuff. Puffed white paint, white, black. Um, this is a Loon Hardhead Clear uh, Crazy Glue uh, with a brush. This is that Flash uh, Tinsel that I bought from Cabela's. Um, yep. What else, too? Uh, that's the Merla Tinsels that I used and cut it down to strips. It comes in a, in a roll, I think like 20, 25 yard or something like that. And it comes in a row, you just cut it with your scissors, just cut it to length size of whatever desire. And those are the flash that I already pre-cut already, got a crap ton of it. And these are the hairs that you use to tie your river flies. You use green, red, purple. The red and purple are synthetic. The green one, that's a real bucktail, but I'm going to use that to tie the river flies. First thing first, I'm going to grab the hook, but um, first thing you want to do is get yourself a nice tying kit, uh, a fly tying kit. Um, I bought this one from Cabela's. Um, has a comes with a C-clamp and everything. They, I believe it retails for like $65 or something like that. Comes with everything. Um, it holds and stuff like that. You want something to hold firmly and everything um it comes with all your other utensils and stuff that you might need scissors little pliers um the other tools um i don't use it because we have no purpose of using it i guess but yeah this is how you do it you open up your fly tie holder make sure it's secure uh, i like to make sure the barb is not sticking out 
So that way I don't have to poke myself with the hook or whatever. And yeah, make sure it's in place. Um, taking it out just the way you guys can see it again. Make sure the barb is not sticking out. And then what I like to do is the orange thread that we like to use is 100% polyester. Uh, we just got it from Walmart from Arts and Craft. I have um, I'll have it linked down in the description. But first thing you want to do is just put the thread down, run it through straight through the eyelid, and just give it a couple wraps around the line that you put in. And then just get some wraps going just over the line. Uh, the thread that you have over the um, the hook. Just give it some wraps, you know, just keep going. It doesn't have to be perfect, don't have to be clean. Sometimes I find the uglier flies works better. But after tying your own multiple times, you'll get better over time. Practice makes perfect. So I just like to wrap it all the way down until the end of the thread that you first threaded through the eye of the hook is pretty much no more visibility of all the orange thread that you read through and i like to bring it back nearby the eye of the hook so that way it'll be easy to um for your next step <clears throat> so when i'm done i just leave it hanging right there and then grab your bucktail so what i like to do is when i'm grabbing a portion of the bucktail i like to you know, you got a picture of your fly. So, um, I just grab a clump and imagine it the way how it's going to look onto your hook. And I like to twist it and spread it out evenly. So, that as you can see here, that's how it will look when it's on your fly. Well, when it's on your um, hook. Give it a couple of twists just to make sure. Everything look all look nice, and then once you have your desired look of clump of hair, just chop it off like that, and then um, yeah, you grab your your flash, and then you mix it up with your bucktail. Doesn't matter how much you put; it's all personal preference. You can put more, you can put less. You don't have to put any if you don't want to. And then you mix it all in. It doesn't have to be even because you're going to be cutting it to even it out. So right now it's not even yet. So you grab it, start trimming or cutting one of the ends. Make sure it's as even as possible. So that way when you put it onto the hook, it's very easy to tie onto the hook. So that way you'll, you'll see when I put it on there. But you can see it's pretty even. And then now you grab your bucktail. And then you last where you left your bobbin pin. It's right there by the eye. And that's the reason why you left it there. Or R is going to leave it there. So that way you give it some wraps. I like to slowly start it off. Because sometimes the bucktail doesn't hold well. It slips. So I like to give it a firm hold. With my left hand. And just give it a couple wraps. Make sure everything is nice and tight. Um, and we like to. Or I like how. I like to put a nice thin wrap on it. Don't go too crazy heavy on it first because you're still going to have to put your Marla tensile strip on there. As you can see, I'm pulling, see if there's any loose hairs. So that way, you know what's on there and what's not on there. Just make sure everything is nice and tight. The flash is, is there. Lift it up. Then that's just the beginning for now. And then you grab your Marla strip. As you can see here. 
gently place it on top just make sure it's as even as possible it takes it takes uh it takes practice it takes a lot of practice to make to put this on i remember first time my dad first started using the merlot tinsel i wasn't too good at it um like i'll get frustrated because it'll never be straight it'll never be even but yeah once you got it on just make sure it's straight put your wraps on um, I like to go behind the first wraps just to make sure everything's all secure and snug. And then after you think everything's good, I like to make my heads a little bit bigger. So I keep giving some wraps. As you can see, the size of the head of the river fly is a lot bigger than what you see my dad has. So now what I'm doing is I'm holding the line in place, giving it a fly knot, and then make sure everything's all snug and secure. Don't pull it too hard because you're going to snap off the polyester thread. And then you're going to grab your scissors and snip as close as possible. But um, don't worry about the, the bucktail or the hair that's in front of the eye of the hook. You're just going to burn it off but with the crazy glue now you're gonna um yeah apply a light coating on it don't go too heavy on it because if you go too heavy it's gonna take a while for the glue to cure and you just don't want to touch it when it has a lot of glue on it go ahead and cap it and then you see the lighter in the background so now or optional you can use your loon hard head i'll show you on the next fly of how to do it but yeah now to clean up the the buck hair in front of the front eye you just gently and be careful be careful when you're doing this because there you go you could see everything on fire right there had to blow it off and then what I'm doing is I'm just straining everything out, make sure everything's nice and even. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect, but after doing it for a while, it becomes an art. Uh, I mean, I don't make any pretty flies. As long as it works, that's all that matters to me. And I'm just giving it a couple of nice and um, pulls to make sure it's not loose or anything. But um, here's another one. First thing you want to do is... Put your orange thread through the eye of the hook. Oh, uh, guess I have to do it all over again. Grab your orange thread, guide it through the eye of the hook, give it some wraps. Like what I said, it doesn't have to be perfect, just keep wrapping it through. And it's all a personal preference of what you want to do. The, the reason why I wrap it a lot on the body of the hook is because I don't use any fuzzy, um, I guess, craft stuff to like show the body of the root fly. I know uh, my dad likes to, but I don't. So that's why I like to put a heavy wrap on the long shank of the hook. Again, now you just let it hang there by the eye of the hook. And then you grab your clump of hair that you already grabbed and your flash. And I'm just doing any extra trimming before I even put it onto the hook. Make sure everything's all nice and even. Give it some trims. Guess I'll do more trimming. Yeah, but this voiceover is going to be pretty long. It's 24 minutes, like I said. Sorry for it being so long. Alright, I'm done trimming it. And now you're just going to gently give it a wrap. Like Wes said, when you first put it on the bucktail onto the hook, you just want gently, not too hard of a pressure because it's going to make all the bucktail wants to, like, um, go under the hook 
it's gonna make it it's gonna be slipping and it's gonna go all over the place once you get it started then you could pull some tension on it and then it will just snug it itself onto the hook and i don't like to wrap it past the eye of the hook because if you do that you won't be able to have any room to put your fishing line through it so i'm just wrapping it And just pulling the hair again, see if there's any loose one. As you can see, I don't want to go near the eye or pass it. Just gonna leave it there and grab the Marla tinsel. <clears throat> um, gently place it on top, make sure it's all nice and even, lined up with the long shank of the hook. Apply some pressure to keep it straight. Gently put your wraps in. And then once you get the first two going, and then you could just let it go and just continue with your wraps. I like to just go back and forth and then go past your first wrap of the head portion of the wraps. So that way you know everything is all nice and secure. Because if you don't, after a fish takes the first bite of your fly, and if you don't secure your, your Merlot tinsel, I'm 100% guarantee it's going to rip. Because, you know, walleye teeth or any predator fish, they're going to rip it all apart. Um, just pulling the hairs, see how everything looks. And now you're going to do your fly knot, hold it securely. Then put it on there. And then if you pull too hard and it breaks or snaps off, this is how I fix it. So if you ever have a trouble with like, you know, you pull too hard and everything all snaps after your fly knot, I just hold it down gently, apply a coat of the super glue. Don't go too crazy on it, just a light coating, so that way everything holds together. And then if you was to apply the hard head, um, the loon hard head clear coat on it, this will be time to apply it after, but um, clean the bucktail here. So that way it has a clean finish, the eyes will be open. Got that little extra piece there. Just plucking, pulling the hair, make sure everything's all nice. Using the plier from the fly tying kit to grab that last piece of thread that's just hanging off. All right, got it off. And then just using the scissor just to try to snip whatever off, but. I just I forget it. And now with the hard head clear coat, just want to apply a light coating on it. You don't go too heavy. If you go too heavy, it's going to affect your fly. It's going to have a faster sinking rate, a faster sink rate. So you just want to put a light coating just so that way everything locks in all hard and stuff like that. So that way the head of all your thread and everything will just all be nice and locked in um, so that way all the threads won't be moving and stuff like that that's the advantage of using the clear coat hard head uh, coating so as you can see I'm applying a light coating of the clear coat the lone brand hard head clear coat um, yeah. Then pulling the hairs again. Just make sure everything's all nice and secure. You don't want no loose hair. Because you don't want no fish to bite it. And then all your hair is missing after one fish. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, You can see the eye of the hook is wide open. It's 
exposed, it's open, so that way when you tie your fishing line through it, you have enough room to put your line in there. Especially if you tie polymer knots, you have to put it right back through into the line and everything. But yeah, that's the finished product. Oh yeah, just focusing on it. Next step is I'm going to show you guys how to apply or how I use to make my puffy eyes. We like to use the white puffy paint that you get from any arts and crafts store. Well, we buy it from Walmart. I think it's only like $2. And just get a white and black. For demonstration purposes, um, I just kind of rush this. So you just want to be really careful when you squeeze the bottle. Because if you apply too much pressure, it's going to be a big old clump. It's going to make a big old mess on your um, hard work time flies. Once you get it on there, you will let it cure after you apply the white one. Let's say two hours, let it harden. After that, you go back and apply the black one. Just put a black dot on it. Or for demonstration purposes, um, I just went in and just put the black one right away. But I'm um, doing a 360 of, of the beginning of the white portion of the eyes with the puffy paint. As you can see, I have a dimple there. So I'm going to go back and retouch it with the white puffy paint. Just a light dab, just to make sure it's all nice and full. It's okay if you're, um, the first white part of the eyes is has a little point sticking out it doesn't affect the way how the fly is it's fine um the fish is not really too picky about it too like what i said sometimes the ugliest flies works even better than the most prettiest one it's the top view as you can see the clear coat has a little shine on it if you don't put a clear coat it doesn't have a shine but it the glue the super glue just does the job just give it a little touch up And yeah, it's just the beginning. The the eye of the hook is wide open. Put it back into fly C clamp holder. And then now I'm kind of rushing it just for demonstration purposes. Um, put in the black paint in. If you let it cure, put in the black paint on it for the pupils it's really easy but since the white part of the, the glue or the puffy paint is still wet it's, it has a tendency of just of want to go same way oops but yeah that's it pretty much it the way how a timer flies put it back on there show you guys the end final product results Sorry if the video is everywhere, but like I said, this is a voiceover video, and um, if the audio doesn't match up, um, sorry. But I've been trying to get this video all together. I should have just recorded while I was recorded the audio while I was basically tying and everything. Everything went lined up, but hope this helps you guys and everything to tie your river flies and. That is how I tie run flies, and there you go. Just go out. It's your time to go get them. Some of the final results. All right.